About to make them dance now. Yeah. Throw that boy. Throw that, throw that boy. Throw that, throw that boy. Throw that, throw that boy. Throw that boy. Throw that boy. Pussy. Turn to the story of a University of California scientist who discovered that a popular herbicide may have harmful effects on the endocrine system. Tyrone Hayes was first hired in 1997 by a company that later became agribusiness giant Syngenta. They asked him to study their, pro their product, atrazine, a pesticide that is applied to more than half the corn crops in the United States and widely used on golf courses and Christmas tree farms. But after Hayes found results that the, the manufacturer did not expect, that atrazine causes sexual abnormalities in frogs and could cause the same problems for humans, Syngenta refused to allow him to publish his work. I was already studying the effects of hormones and the effects of chemicals that interfere with hormones on amphibian development, and I was approached by the manufacturer and asked to study the effects of atrazine, uh, the herbicide, on frogs. And after I discovered that it interfered with male development and caused uh, males to turn into females to develop eggs, the company tried to prevent me from publishing and from discussing that work with other scientists outside of their panel. What was the process within the company as you raised the, your findings? Uh, what was their immediate reaction uh, to, uh, to what you had come across? Well, initially, they seemed uh, sort of supportive. Um, we, you know, we designed more studies, we designed more analysis, and they encouraged me to do more analysis. But as the further analysis uh, just supported the original finding, they became less interested in moving forward very quickly. And eventually, they moved to asking me to manipulate data or to rep misrepresent data. And ultimately, they told me I could not publish or could not talk about the data outside of their closed panel. And, uh, Professor Hayes, talk about exactly what you found. What were the abnormalities you found in frogs, the gender-bending nature of uh, this drug, mm -hmm. atrazine? Well, initially, we found that the larynx or the voice box in exposed males didn't grow properly. And this was an indication that the male hormone testosterone was not being produced at appropriate levels. And eventually, we found that not only did were these males demasculinized or chemically castrated, but they also were starting to develop ovaries or starting to develop eggs. And eventually, we discovered that these males didn't breed properly, uh, that some of the males actually completely turned into females. So we had genetic males that were laying eggs and reproducing as females. And now we're starting to show that some of these males actually show, um, I guess, what, what we call homosexual behavior. They actually prefer to mate with other males. And, and when did you begin to get a sense that the company was organizing a campaign uh, against you? What were the signs that you saw uh, uh, post the, the period when you be, uh, published your findings? Uh, before we published the findings and before the EPA became involved, the company tried to purchase the data. They tried to give me a new contract so that they would then control the data and the experiments. They eventually even led to things like threats of violence. Um, Tim Pastor, for example, before I would give a talk, would, uh, would literally threaten, whisper in my ear that he could have me lynched or he would quote, said he would send some of his good old boys to show me what it's like to be gay, or he, at one point he threatened my wife and my daughter with, with sexual violence. Uh, he would whisper things like, your wife's at home alone right now. How do you know I haven't sent somebody there to take care of her? Isn't your daughter there? So eventually it really slipped into some, you know, pretty, pretty scary tactics. I wanted to ask you about one of your critics, Elizabeth Whalen, president of the American Council on Science and Health. When the New York Times ran a critical story about the herbicide as part of its toxic water series in 2009, she referred to its reporting as, quote, all the news that's fit to scare. This is a clip of Whalen from an interview on MSNBC. I, I very much disagree with the New York Times story, which is really raising uh, concerns about a totally bogus risk. Atrazine has been used for more than 50 years. It's very, very tightly regulated. Even the Environmental Protection Agency, which is not known for uh, soft peddling about uh, environmental chemicals, even they say it's safe.
Well, it turns out that Syngenta has been a long-term financial supporter of Wayland's organization, the American Council on Science and Health, paying them at least $100,000. Uh, your uh, comments on, uh, on her remarks? You know, that's one of the most disheartening things, that, that they were really just personalities for sale. Um, and many of the things that, that she's saying there is just not true. There, any independent study uh, from any scientist that's not funded by Syngenta has found similar problems with atrazine, not just my work on frogs, but I've just published a paper with 22 scientists from around the world, from 12 different countries, who've shown that atrazine causes sexual problems in mammals, and that atrazine causes sexual problems in birds, amphibians, fish. So it's not just my work in amphibians. In amphibians. Uh, and also, with regards to the EPA, one of the scientific advisory panel members on the EPA that was supposed to review atrazine, turns out, is paid and works for Syngenta. So the whole process was tainted. And in fact, the EPA ignored the scientific advisory panel's opinion and actually decided to keep atrazine on the market and not to do any more studies, when that clearly wasn't the recommendation of the scientific advisory panel to the year 2000. The Novartis not only made atrazine, which is used on corn, of course, which is an herbicide, but it also induces an enzyme called aromatase. It causes you to make too much estrogen. And it's now been shown that this herbicide atrazine and this mechanism is potentially involved in development of breast cancer, for example. Up until 2000, the company also made a chemical called letrozole, which did exactly the opposite. It blocked aromatase. It blocked this enzyme. It blocked estrogen production. About to make them dance now. Nice. As we wrap up, what's happening with atrazine today? Where does it stand? It's still on the market. Uh, we're still studying it. Um, a number of studies are still coming out from around the world. One recent study has shown that male babies that are exposed in utero to atrazine, their genitals don't develop properly. Their penis doesn't develop properly, or they get microphallus. There are studies showing that sperm count goes down when you're exposed to atrazine. And this is not just laboratory animals or animals in the wild. This is also humans. We use the same hormones that animals do for our reproduction, and it's a big threat to environmental health and public health. I want to thank you very much for being with us, Tyrone Hayes, a professor of integrative biology at the University of California, Berkeley, has devoted the past 15 years to studying atrazine, a widely used herbicide made by Syngenta. We'll link to the article in The New Yorker magazine that reveals how the company tried to discredit Professor Hayes after his research showed atrazine causes sexual abnormalities in frogs and could cause the same problems for humans. The article is called A Valuable Reputation, after Tyrone Hayes said that a chemical was harmful, its maker pursued him. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute.